After waiting with bated breath, the Presidential Election Tribunal has dismissed the petition filed by the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and its presidential candidate, Atiku Abubka. And Namdi Kanu is not giving up on IPOB, yes, because he took his agitation for the actualization of a sovereign state called Biafra to the European Union Parliament. Now this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cohn. There's some of these rulings that some people say they already saw it coming and there's some that a couple of people are saying we need to proceed to the Supreme Court. Give us a basic knowledge of what actually happened because we were watching all day. Uh, basically, petitions are judged by their grounds upon which they are predicated and then the reliefs that the petitioner is seeking. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at the grounds of that petition um, against the reliefs that was sought by the petitioners, um, those who understand the, how the process works uh, knew that it was not going to fly because um, while the petitioners were saying, talking about electronic transmission of results. Well, that was an issue for a long time. If yes. there was a server or there was no server. Exactly. You know. Exactly. And you saw what the court has come out to say today because what they were saying was not captured as it were today in the body of our laws, right? So the ANEC guidelines and the Electoral Act has, not, has no provision for electronic transmission of results. Everything that has to do with results from the polling unit up to the world, up to the local government coalition centers, and to the states, and leading up to the national coalition center is a manual process. But then um, I had thought that the court would have made some um, more progressive uh, pronouncement on certain issues, like, for example, the issue of the card reader and the process of accreditation of, of voters at elections. Now, in 2015, there was an amendment to the Electoral Act that deleted Section 52, Subsection 2, that was contained in the 2010 Electoral Act. Mm -hmm. In that act, it said there shall be no electronic voting as a 2010 amendment to the Act. But in 2015, there was another amendment that deleted that provision and now inserted a new provision that voting shall be according to the procedure laid down by INEC. It triggers the question, where is that procedure contained? It is in the INEC guidelines. And the guidelines was issued pursuant to the powers given, by, given to INEC by Section 153 of the Electoral Act. So we had, I had expected the Court of Appeal today to say, OK, in the event of the amendment to the Electoral Act in 2015, having given INEC the powers to lay down the procedure to conduct election. So, the election ought to be conducted in line with the provision in the guideline. But we saw the courts still take us back to cases that, we are, that came before this 2015 amendment, talking about use of manual accreditation of voters. So that's an element of the judgment that I thought is not that progressive. And I expect the petitioners to take it up as a first ground of the appeal to the Supreme Court. And let us see if the court, the apex court, will be bold enough to depart from those decisions that had before now said the means of accreditation must be manual through the use of voters' register. Mm -hmm. You understand? We we'll expect them to say no. It was because of the mischief, because of this high speed of um, electoral uh, uh, rigging as elections. Manipulation. Yeah, yeah. so the 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 uh, Annex said no, let us deploy some, sem some semblance of technology and let us limit the accreditation process electronically. So that if 50 persons we are accredited by the card reader, we can't expect more than 50 results in the result sheet for that unit. You understand? So I would expect the Supreme Court, in the event this issue comes before them, to make a definite pronouncement so that going forward, we would know that we have moved uh, uh, beyond that era where we had to do things in a manual way. The IPOB leader told Parliament uh, that it was the ill treatment meted by President Buhari led all progressive Congress APC administration that aggravated the situation that worsened the agitation for Biafra. Why can't we talk about this issue and gain clarity and know what is right from wrong? Um, I think the reason for that fear, especially from the side of the government at that time, was um, the approach that Kano adopted for his agitation. Um, it, was, it was offensive, even to the average Igbo man. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, there, are some, you, there, there is a 
a good way to say a good thing and a bad way to say a good thing. Mm -hmm. And the guy was, like you were saying off air, everybody has got a right to self-determination. You can't force me to be a Nigerian if I don't want to. Um, but there are laws and there are customs and there are norms of society. There are things that you shouldn't say. There are things that you can say, right? So um, Nam Dekanu broke all of those rules, everything. There were, there were no rules, you know, anything was acceptable to him. Everything was game. Um, Nigeria was a zoo. Um, he would blow any Nigerian, you know, um, up. He said a lot of very um, potentially inciting violence, um, 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 yeah, violence inciting things in that run-up, right? So I think it was on the back of that that the NBC and the government sort of got a bit cagey uh, with allowing that to go too far without censorship.